Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. In today's video, I am thrifting at Value Village and it's a long one, but it is a good one. <laughs> I found this amazing vintage piece. I mentioned it in my last video. I find it right at the very beginning pretty much so you don't have to wait <laughs> to see what that is. It does need to be restored, but um, it was a really good deal and I don't regret getting it. I would have very much regret it get, not getting it so when we first walk in they have their halloween things and i've mentioned before but i've been a big thrifter since the 90s and i would go to value village like back in like 94 95 all the time and this whenever i see the halloween stuff it just makes me feel so nostalgic for that time because they'd always have like used costumes and things but then they always had the wall with the new kind of uh like costume accessories i guess you could say and i would always go to value village to find costumes i would usually just kind of make my own using thrifted clothing but um one of the things that i miss about my thrifting in the 90s days <laughs> is how easy it was to find 70s clothing it's basically like the equivalent of being able to find clothing from like the 2000s now um and i I had so, so many amazing pieces that were from the 70s that I wish I had now. I think for the entire year of like 1997, I wore nothing but 70s clothing and it was so amazing. People definitely thought I was weird, especially back then, um, but I loved it and yeah, I had so many amazing pieces. So. I went in to look at the furniture first, which I almost didn't do because I had been looking in there not too long before that. Just at first glance, I didn't see anything, but I was like, oh, well, let's take a look. Every time I see these type of computer desks, I get super nostalgic for the 90s. I feel like um, I just see them all the time now because obviously most people just have a laptop and you don't need, you know, this big computer desk. But um, when I was growing up, usually you had one computer in the whole house and it was usually like in the living room or something and it usually had a big desk but yeah so I decided to take a look at the furniture I noticed um as I was kind of going in I think this is like a vintage um massage table maybe it definitely had looks like it's older and after I stopped looking at that I noticed over here this um like weird shelf looking thing but I thought oh that looks like it would fit records so I tried to get my cart through but it wasn't gonna fit and I'm very happy it did not fit because I might have just kept on going and not came back then I went to go down here and I noticed this piece it just stood right out to me and I was like oh hello I pulled it out and realized it was a table that folds out on both sides this is very very much my aesthetic also we have uh, some shelving underneath which I thought oh I could put vintage cookbooks on that and also my kitchen is very tiny so it really um, it needs to be renovated <laughs> it's like a project that is in uh, a want not a need the kitchen's perfectly fine it's just not how I want it to be but I want to completely gut it and start over so it's very costly so it will probably be years before we actually are able to do that because there's more like we need need to get things done <laughs> but even when we do that we're not gonna be able to have a very large table in there because it is a small kitchen so I saw this and thought this could be perfect for the kitchen. It does need to be restored, especially it's mostly just down here at like the legs and the wheels and stuff. I have no idea how to do that, but I do know that people do restore old like chrome pieces. So I know it's possible. Anyway, um, it was only $20.99, which really made me think, okay, we need to just buy this because if we don't, I'm going to think about this piece probably forever <laughs> so I just uh John was like in another area looking at something else so I was like okay I'm just gonna put that back in there so no one else sees it I'm just gonna hang out here right by it so that no one else comes along because we had got there right as the store was opening um 
So I was just kind of hanging out, just kind of looking around at what was around me. This uh, end table I really liked with the uh, sides there. We pretty much have the same style in our living room now. And then I decided to walk over and have a look at this, uh, which I thought, oh, records would definitely fit. But then I noticed it was already sold, so it doesn't matter. But I have this really amazing, like, vintage-inspired record stand, but it's full. <laughs> And I just keep finding records that I love. So then John came over to say hey, and I was like, okay, I found something. <laughs> and uh, he could tell that I was really excited about it just by the way I said it. So I wheeled it out to show him. He liked it as well right away. And so we were, we're just conversing over what we should do, if we should get it, if we shouldn't get it, um, all of that. John wanted to like look underneath and see um, how the pieces actually stayed up so there's these little um i don't know what i don't know what the word is but they just pull out they kind of slide out and um john couldn't get it to work he was like yeah it's just stuck so then we had this little um friendly argument about <laughs> whether or not it was one piece or two and i was like i'm looking at two pieces um it's like a piece that slides out and a bracket holding it up so anyway eventually we did end up getting one of them to work. One of them must just be stuck. Um, and so technically I was right because it was two pieces, but uh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and yeah, so because it was only like $20 and uh, 99 cents, we actually had a coupon too for 20% off. So um, I was debating whether or not it would fit in the car. John's like, yeah, I can get that in the car. No problem. So we don't have a really big car but anyway we did end up getting it long story short and I'm so excited and so even though it's just in storage right now um I am excited that one day it will hopefully be in my kitchen all shiny and new looking so um it was twenty ninety nine minus twenty percent, whatever that is. I think that's a great deal. I I love. I just left this part in where we're just like making the final <laughs> discussion about it, and I love how we both um, talk with our hands. So you can just see both of us um, doing that as we're, <laughs> we're talking it out. I'm just still filming it. We're just still looking at it, and I don't know. Just I sped the footage up, but you get what I mean. So after we decided to buy it, we were going to use the 20% off coupon. The 20% off coupon is good up to $50, so you would save $10 off of $50. So John just went to look for anything else he could buy because he was going to buy it right away. Because he at first he, he said, oh, well, I'll just put it up by the cash and like tell them that we're going to buy it. But I was too scared that someone else would come and see it and want to buy it and like maybe it would be a different cashier that was there or something and that somebody else would buy it so because we're generally in value village for a couple of hours at a time so he was like yeah let me just go ahead and buy it right now then he looked to see if he could find anything else um but he couldn't so he just bought it so i was just hanging out here waiting for him to come back and i found the green boo bucket which from um, I think it was last year they came out with them again. They're very like very reminiscent of the 80s ones. I think the 80s ones are nicer and I like them better but these ones will do and someday these will be collectible as well I'm sure. So at this point um, I do not know or I don't realize that just the day before I had actually seen well I hadn't seen it but I had walked by the white one, which is the only one I don't have now. They only had the orange ones at our McDonald's last year. So uh, we just got two orange ones, but I wanted to get the white one and the green one. So now I have the green one, which is the witch. So now I just need the white one. So I'm hoping that I will come across the white one again since they just came out last year. But anyway, at this point, I'm thinking, oh, now I just need to find the white one, not realizing that the day before I could have bought the white one. So I'm just looking through all the seasonal things. I'm not really seeing a whole lot that is um, interesting me, but then I did notice on the top shelf that they have these other Halloween buckets from Tim Hortons, which is like our, co I would say like the national coffee chain here. Although I think that they are in some US states as well. Um, like I think maybe Maine, I don't want to say 
that might be accurate. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would pick those up too because maybe they would be collectible. I don't know. I think they just came out last year as well, but they were pretty inexpensive. So, and then look what I saw the Christmas geese. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I've been thinking about this for like about a week or two. I'm like, maybe I should start buying all the geese stuff just as like a fun thing to do, just to see how many different things with the geese that we can find and collect and then maybe like I'll do it for like a year or something and then we just at the end of it we can have a have a look at all of the things I've acquired over the course of a year because I feel like I see everything with the geese on it like um clocks I, I even seen curtains once I don't know it might be like a fun thing because I see it so much and it's usually pretty inexpensive so I've been thinking about it I love that they did like a Christmas version and everything it comes from, um, like, I know I talk about how ugly it is all the time and stuff, but uh, I do think it's ugly. It's just not my style. But for someone else, it might be something they love. And I think that's amazing. I don't think that um, people should, like, base their likes or dislikes on, like, what's trendy or what's not trendy or, like, what other people think is cute or ugly. I don't know. But um <laughs> I think for me, as somebody who doesn't like things too matchy matchy, I couldn't imagine having my kitchen, like every piece of everything in the kitchen being the same pattern. I think that would be just really, um, I don't know, I, just, I wouldn't be able to stand it. But for someone else, and certainly at that time, a lot of people were very into all the matchy matchy. I just wanted to say that so that I don't sound so mean every time I talk about it. It's definitely not um, if you like it. There's no uh, issue there. Like, don't feel bad if you like it and I'm making fun of it because <laughs> my opinion doesn't matter. But speaking of matchy matchy, we've got another piece down here. I wish I would have like been sure that I could do it on this day because I could have got that mug. I could have got this. I think it's like a fake broom. Remember when those were really popular? People would hang them on their walls. I mean... Maybe some people still do, but I just feel like it was a popular decor trend. And that's what I find really funny about decor trends is people will look back and think it's like the most hideous thing. But at the time, they think it's the greatest. So um, I'll just give an example. Maybe like five or six years ago, whenever I would talk about wanting to put up wallpaper, people would always be like that's so dated that's so ugly like why would you do that that's so gross but now that wallpaper is trendy everyone's putting wallpaper up in their house I just think it's so funny and it and it sometimes it's the same people who just a few years ago say that and then now they're like wallpaper in your house I just think it's really funny I live by the philosophy that you should just decorate your home exactly how you want to with what you like and not pay attention to trends at all and I'm also I also live by the philosophy that you don't have to like redo your house all the time like the way that some people do um I don't know I guess there's nothing wrong with it if that's what you want to do either <laughs> I always feel like I sound so mean when I talk about things um I don't I just I'm very like let's just make our home the way we like it and cozy and then be satisfied with that, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Whereas I feel like because of the rise of social media, you just see like the trends are happening faster and faster and it's just causing overconsumption, I guess, is, what is the point I'm trying to make. So then I met back up with John and he was showing me what he got. He sells a lot of video game stuff, so he had found this video game thing that he was excited about because it was still in the box but he also um found this star wars poster from 1996 and i'm so excited about it i'm gonna like hang it up in the video story area it's like not in the greatest of shape but i just love it and i love that it's like actually from the 90s but the poster itself is from the original trilogy it's from um return of the jedi so i guess that would be 80s but um just really excited about it i saw this sign i thought that would be cool to put in the video store as well but then i noticed this which completely unlocked a memory for me um i feel like potpourri was very big in the 80s and 90s too i, I remember growing up like in the 
at my mom's house she had a lot of it but I don't know that I've ever seen it in a crock pot so I thought that was interesting and I loved that it was still in the box too I decided not to get the sign because it didn't have any of the letters so I realized I wouldn't actually be able to like put anything on it but um and then I noticed this which also unlocked memory when I was growing up like in the 80s my dad had a Commodore 64 computer and he had so many games. I, I want to say he had like hundreds of games, but he had those con those um, containers that were just filled with, I want to call them floppy disks, but I think the flop like floppy disks were actually the smaller hard disks, but these ones were actually the larger, more floppier disks is what I'm thinking of. <laughs> So I'm always on the hunt for cute vintage mugs, which seem to just not be happening very often these days. Um, I decided, John decided to look up that Tim Hortons mug in case it was um, like worth reselling. Some, a lot of Starbucks and Tim Hortons mugs can be worth money to resell. Although I feel like I remember when all of the mugs at Valley Village would be $1.99, but now I feel like they price them differently. Like if they are worth more, they think they're worth more. So I think, I don't think the Tim Hortons one was worth reselling. Um, but I'm here to say that the mug curse was over on this day because look at these beauties I found. So these were two fifty dollars a piece, which was actually quite decent. So it was like two for five. I thought, wow, I need to have these. And then I looked down and I saw two more. <laughs> I was like, wow, it is my lucky day. And then I saw two more. Um, so I ended up getting all six of these. I have yet to determine whether I'm just going to keep them in the kitchen or if I'm just going to end up reselling them at some point, but I was super happy to find them. That's like the aesthetic that I'm always hoping to find. So it was nice. Um, and then we found this little like Tweety Bird playing golf, uh, glass. So I, we did end up getting that to resell, I think. And then there was a football one there. Um, that we also got to resell. I think it's from the 80s. <laughs> I feel the same way about glasses as I do about mugs. I just used to see so many cute vintage ones and now it's just so hard. I rarely ever see vintage things in general and if I do, they're priced so high. But I did notice this Hires root beer. I have a bunch of the A&W ones and it was actually from Burger King. I would have got this had it not been so damaged. Um, I just think things like that are cool. They remind me of my childhood so anyway I was sad that that one um was damaged but that's the first time I think I've seen uh, one of those but I do see the a &W ones all the time but we already have um enough of them <laughs> I'm gonna also say the same thing about salt and pepper shakers. I used to find so many cute salt and pepper shakers, but now I feel like I just never really see any, or I just see kind of the same ones a lot of the time. I did see this cream and sugar set, which I thought was really cute. Not to keep, but to resell. I was thinking about it for a little while, um, but 
ultimately I, I think if it would have been a little bit cheaper I would have but I was doing trying to do the math in my head and I was thinking I don't know if this is worth it like for eight dollars plus tax and I was trying to think of what I could sell it for and yeah I just decided to pass there's another I mentioned in my last video I think or maybe it was the one before that at Salvation Army how many like beautiful china sets I've been seeing and um when I recorded that voiceover obviously I had, I had already been thrifting in here because on this day I'm pretty sure I saw a lot of really really nice um just beautiful big sets of china and I was just mentioning how I don't think it's that popular anymore to use china so I think a lot of people are just getting rid of it or people are inheriting it maybe and just being like I'm never going to use this um I use mine sometimes I should probably use it more but I guess it's just the two of us so I don't think to do it that much i saw what i thought was a cake stand which well it is um but i thought it was cool that when you flipped it over it would uh, hold deviled eggs that would actually match my kitchen but i don't really have a need for it but i did think that it was cute so i left it that side up so that somebody would know <laughs> that like oh it's not just a cake stand it's for eggs too i think i i do actually have a deviled egg uh, vintage deviled egg tray it's, uh, I want to say it's carnival glass, I think, um, but it's been on my list. I have this big list of vintage recipes I want to make, and that was one of them, but like I need to veganize it, so um, I do have a, a way to do it. I just have never got around to it. I actually love these. I kind of wish I would have got them, like this avocado-ish green color, and um, they didn't fit on the bowl that I was trying to to put it on but that is what it's for just like putting on the side of a bowl and I thought oh how clever and you can have two different types of dip in um in it but I don't know I guess I just felt like do I need these <laughs> but when I looked at them when I was editing the footage I was like oh I should have got those but oh well So I thought this big set here on the bottom of like stoneware-ish, I don't know if it's actually stoneware, it was really nice. And then there was this massive, two massive sets of china with like all the pieces. Um, I don't think I noticed how much it was, but if you were looking for sets of china, I'm telling you thrift stores are the place to go to find some really nice sets. I think this one is actually from the 90s, maybe maybe the 80s, but um, those like electric carving knives that you hang on the wall, I, I want one, they have them in like Harvest Gold, Avocado Green, I, w I want one to add to my kitchen, like I think about it sometimes, but then I also think like I have no use for it, I'm vegan, what am I carving? <laughs> but um, I don't know, I just feel like things, little things like that just make it feel so much more authentic like 70s kitchen and so I always think about those little things that I could add to the kitchen so I'm sure I could find one on eBay probably pretty easily if I decide that I have well I need to find some wall space too that's the thing I don't have a lot of wall space in my kitchen because it's tiny um but I don't know maybe Every time I see a fondue pot as well, even if it's not vintage, I think, why haven't I made the fondue recipe yet? But I just haven't. <laughs> Eventually I'll get to it. I don't know. I do want to do some holiday ones, but I don't know. I'm My goal, I think, for next year is to do them on a regular basis, but maybe I'll get to some this year as well. 
One of my favorite things is seeing as seen on TV products still in the box in a thrift store. Like you just know that someone thought this was a great idea and then very quickly realized it wasn't. I always like to check for vintage thermoses to resell. I did see this one from Tim Hortons that looks old-ish. I don't know how old, probably maybe 20 years. So I did put that one in the cart to look up and see if it was worth reselling or if it was worth any money. I was trying really hard to read the bottom, but it just, the between the glare of the like bright lights in there it just wasn't happening and then i had seen this other tim hortons cup too so i thought i should grab both of those and look those up well actually yeah, i got john to look it up since i was filming on my phone but neither one were worth um picking up to resell so we left both of them behind These pans remind me so much of my early childhood. I'm pretty sure that we had a set in Harvest Gold, I want to say. Um, but my dad would always make Chinese food from scratch when I was a kid. It was so good. It was like one of my favorite meals as a kid. I say this every time I see these, but I wish that they still made like pots and pans like this. Oh, I just think they're so cute. Um, I would have bought this to resell, but the price on them seems to be quite high. And then I saw this one too, which again, so cute. And um, yeah, I wish, I wish that a company would come out with like vintage designs or something, but it would be, be like new. I swear, I feel like they would make so much money because there's so many of us that would love to have that stuff again like i wish that corel would re-release some of their vintage patterns but it would be like you know not filled with lead <laughs> um but i feel like so many people would buy them even if they made them slightly different so that you could you know easily tell if it was a vintage one or a new one but i don't know i feel like they would make a lot of money even if they just did like maybe three or four. I'm seeing so many vintage um, crock pots lately too. And you guys are like kind of convincing me that maybe I should buy one. A lot of you have said that you have them and you love them. We definitely had one of these kind of walk, electric walks, I think, but I think it was in Harvest Gold. We also had like the square kind of frying pan that was electric. That gives me the most nostalgia. Um, but yeah, a lot of you were saying that you like using your vintage crock pot, so I don't know. And I keep seeing them, so maybe it's a sign that I should get a vintage one. I feel like I see this specific vintage crock pot a lot. I feel like it makes an appearance in almost all my videos, or maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. I feel I feel like I've probably shown it the same one multiple times at different thrift stores, but it's still it's always there. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of bread makers too lately. I like I, I don't know if anyone out there has a bread maker or uses one, but is it really? like all that e much easier than making bread like just by hand but like that's how I make it um but I have thought and I know some of you have said you're gluten-free too so usually I eat gluten-free bread occasionally I'll eat sourdough but um 
I was thinking maybe I should get a bread maker and I could make homemade gluten-free bread because gluten-free bread is very expensive. So if any of you make homemade gluten-free bread in a bread maker, let me know in the comments how you like it. So then I spotted these French onion soup bowls, which I already have some that I like, but these are beautiful. And the only reason I didn't get them is because two of them were missing the lids and I just felt like, I don't know, I would have probably got two if two of them had lids and then I probably would have just donated the ones that I have, but um, yeah, these are really beautiful. Very like, they would very much fit my kitchen aesthetic. The ones that I have now are also fitted, but they're not that cute. And I spotted this glass bake uh, version of like the Pyrex Jello mold. I've never seen the glass bake version before. And then I also noticed this piece of corningware. Um, I thought maybe it wasn't actually corningware, but it was because um, I've never seen this pattern before. So I don't know. Well, not my personal style. It is very pretty. I don't remember what this um, pattern is called, but this is some Pyrex from the UK, I believe, like the J-A-J -A -J Pyrex. I used to have a few pieces with that pattern on them, but I sold them quite a few years ago. Then I saw this uh, like milk glass mixing bowl for the Sunbeam mixer, which I do have, but I feel like the milk glass one bowls don't look as good with them. Um, like I have the avocado color. I feel like they don't look as good with like the avocado harvest gold, like the 70s colors, but they do look really cute with the like 50s versions, which I guess I actually do have a 1950s one as well. I always forget about it, which it probably would have looked cute with that one, but oh well. So then we're at the end of the kind of housewares and into books. I always check the book section with cookbooks and craft books and stuff. I've been having tremendous luck lately, especially at this Valley Village. So I did spend quite a bit of time here um, looking at cookbooks and stuff. Um, I noticed this and I thought, oh, I already have that. But I noticed when I was editing that it's actually a car and I just got the home one, I believe. Um, so I would have totally got that one too if I would have actually like realized and not just, you know, I recognized the spine. I was like, oh, I just found that one too. And it wasn't until I looked and saw that. I do have this book already. I've thought about getting that brown set, but um, I also feel like, mm, do I need it? I don't know. Um, I'm going back to this value village this weekend, so maybe if they're still there. Um, but they had a ton, a ton of Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks, which is the main one I collect, and some Betty Crocker. Um, and I still have not made the list on my phone, which I should probably do like before I go back. Um, I did end up getting quite a few, a couple I think I ended up already having, um, but I don't know, it's hard to remember them all. So I should definitely make the list, but there's definitely a lot of really good ones too. Um, the ones that I already have though, um, 
There's a really cute holiday one from the 50s. I already have that. Um, I think I end up showing it at some point, but yeah, part of me also wanted to like put all of them together in just one section to make it easier for someone else to see. But I kind of get overwhelmed with um, how many books there are just in general. I don't know. It's I find it hard on my eyes after a while when I keep looking. <laughs> I love these smaller ones with the colored little strip at the top. I think they're from the 60s, maybe late 50s. I do have a few of those and I think I ended up getting one more in this. I, I do end up showing you uh, everything that I bought at the end of the video. But yeah, then I noticed another section and that's what I mean. Like I kept looking and my eye would go to the Better Homes and Gardens and I would look and then I would like see another section. And then sometimes I would end up going back to the same section because there was just so many and I wouldn't realize like, oh, wait, I already looked at those. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird when you step back and look. It's just so many book titles all in, in a line. I was really excited to find that snacks and appetizers one because I love making snacks and appetizers and I hadn't had that one. I love that pies and cakes one. I already have that. And of course, the cookies and candy. Um, yeah. So I would try to just go, like, take it one shelf at a time and look at all the titles. But in my peripheral is when I will catch, like, ones that interest me. So then I'm, like, moving to another spot and just, I don't know. And here is the holiday one I was referencing earlier. It's from the late 50s, I believe. It's one of the very first ones I found. And actually, they're $5.99 now at Valley Village. But I've been collecting these for quite a few years. And I remember when I started collecting them, they were only $1.99. Some I even think I got for $0.99. Cents. And yeah, so then I just took a quick look at the records and the very first record there was like this Sharon, Lois and Bram. I don't know if that was just a Canadian thing, but um, it was really popular when I was really little. So that was a throwback I showed John, but I only looked through like one stack because I just felt like it was, I just didn't want to spend all the time looking through every single one. But then I did, th um, decide to go over and take a quick little look at the toyer in case there was any vintage toys over there that um, might be worth reselling. Right away I noticed one of those poppers that we'd seen recently. Um, this one I think is newer than the one that we had seen a few thrifts ago I guess you could say. Um, I did not really see anything that stood out to me. I just really was doing a quick look, but recently we found like a Barbie camper. Um, and then I saw these, uh, this brought back so much nostalgia. So these were made by Tupperware. I don't remember what the exact name is, but probably like shape and play or something like that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you just, you know, put the shapes in, but my mom sold Tupperware. I know, I know I say it all the time, but so I had a lot of Tupperware toys actually when I was small, but there's a photo of me like holding this when I'm like three, I think. Um, but I do remember playing with that a lot when I was a kid. And then actually um, Tupperware sometimes would have, I don't know if they sold them or just their consultants had, were able to get them, but they had a lot of um, miniature size of things that were keychains. And so my mom had a miniature size of that that was a keychain. And our cat actually used to play with it like it was a ball. And one day, so it would be really loud because it had the shapes inside of it. <laughs> and one day um, we realized that our cat was making a lot of noise with it. And we realized that it actually, one of its little pads had gone inside one of the holes. So it was stuck on his paw. We were like freaking out. Um, so my mom called the vet. I think it might've happened like at night or like sometime when the vet wasn't open. Um, and they told us to, well, they told us we could bring the cat in or to try wrapping the cat in a towel. <laughs> and like not its head but and then try taking like a hammer to break it since it was just plastic 
Um, so that's what we ended up doing and it came off <laughs> like no problem, but, um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was interesting, but I always think about that every time. So now I'll show you what I got. So John actually found this, um, this Charlie Brown dictionary and I just had to have it. I don't know if I'm actually going to keep it though, but I wanted to look through it. So I might just resell it if, um, it ends up being worth anything, but I love the Peanuts gang. So I found this amazing Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. Just recently, I also found another Better Homes and Gardens um, craft book too from the 60s. I'm just having so much luck with that. Uh, so I've been trying to collect some of the Better Homes and Gardens ones, and uh, I got a few other vintage um crafting sewing knitting books as well so and i did get this cake book i didn't already um have that one and then i got this easy stir fry i'm actually very surprised that i didn't already have this one i think this one might be from the 80s um and then of course i got the snacks and appetizers so excited about this And then I got this drinks, or no, snacks and refreshments. <laughs> but I did already have this one. I was on the fence about whether or not I had it, um, but I thought I'm gonna get it anyway, just in case I don't have it. And then I did find another one of those um, old style photo, photo albums. Um, and the reason I like it so much is I like that it's black pages instead of white. So this one's quite thick. So I think between that and the two other ones I have, I'll be set i found a ton of um autobiographies so i found bob newhart which is ironic because i've been wanting to watch his show um newhart for a while now although i i don't know if it's newhart or if it's the bob newhart show the one i'm referencing is the one from the 80s where he's like an innkeeper i loved that one so i can't remember if it's called newhart or not but anyway i was excited to find that and it reminded me again i'm like oh i have to see if i can like buy that show because i want to watch it for a while so i found tons of other ones as you can see and i did find some vhs i found the movie suddenly which i did actually already have in like a box set which i didn't realize but that's fine um and then i also found this um sinatra I guess like documentary and then I found an Audrey Hepburn movie that I didn't already have which surprised me um Roman Holiday which I actually just watched recently love this movie um and then I, I of course I showed these I think I found these two like Halloween buckets from Tim Hortons and then I've got the green uh witch boo bucket so here's hoping I find the white one and then here's all those amazing mugs that I found. I still haven't decided. Um, I washed them all and they're just kind of sitting in my kitchen. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna keep, uh, I think I am for sure gonna keep a couple of them, but I'm just trying to figure that out now still or like which ones I'd wanna keep. But I'm thinking about putting them over by like my little coffee bar area. So I think that would look really cute. But um, the ones that I don't end up keeping because I don't think I'll keep all six. Although maybe I will, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still just thinking about it because I love them so much. Um, and then I did get this Tweety Bird glass. I think we're going to resell that. And then also that football glass. I think John looked that up in the store and said it was worth getting. But it's weird. You like kind of look through it. It's like a football shape cutout. <laughs> and you can see, I don't know anything about sports really at all, but definitely not football. <laughs> So that's it for today's video. Um, I feel like I made out really well, especially with all those autobiographies and all the cookbooks and that craft book. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.